In your morning news now, breaking overnight, an American soldier from Wisconsin is back on U.S. soil. U.S. military officials say Army Private Travis King, who was recently released into U.S. custody by North Korea, landed at Joint Base San Antonio Fort Sam Houston this morning. King in July dashed across the border between North and South Korea while on a tour of the demilitarized zone. North Korea state news agency says King confessed to illegally entering the country and he says he had faced racial discrimination and inhumane treatment in the U.S. Army. The Wisconsin native had just been released from a military jail in South Korea for assault and was supposed to be heading back to the U.S. to face more disciplinary charges, but instead of departing, he hopped on a bus tour for the DMZ. It took weeks for North Korea to confirm King was in their custody. He's now expected to face additional charges stateside. A Sparta man faces federal charges for his role in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. 37-year-old Charles Walter was arrested yesterday and made his initial appearance in court. He's charged with destruction of government property and several misdemeanors, including entering or remaining in a restricted building and disorderly conduct in the Capitol grounds or buildings. The FBI's Milwaukee and Washington field office are continuing their investigation. The Houston County budget proposal approved this week includes $1.75 million for jail expenses, but county board members want to know if they're better off closing the jail. Under the latest proposal, the jail makes up 5% of the county's 2024 expenses. Sheriff Swedberg says the jail holds 40 inmates, but on an average day, only six are from Houston County. Right now, Winona County pays Houston County to house their inmates while Winona County builds a new jail. The current discussion is when Winona County stops needing Houston County's help, that revenue will go away and make the jail more expensive. The budget proposal being approved does not mean this is set in stone. The board can still make changes before the hard deadline of December 26. Republicans have introduced a bill that would ban gender-affirming care for anyone under 18. If passed, health care providers would not be allowed to perform or refer gender transition treatment for minors. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss is one of several Republicans behind the bill. In a memo, the Republicans said, quote, Our children are not experiments and parents should not be scared or pressured into having their children receive non-medically necessary drugs or irreversible procedures before their brains are fully developed. At least 20 states have enacted similar laws. Should the government shut down, military members would not get their paycheck and only those considered essential would get back pay once the shutdown ends and new funding is approved. Congressman Derek Van Orden of Wisconsin's 3rd District says that can't happen. The Republican is joining the bipartisan Pay Our Troops Act. The bill ensures members of the military continue to get paid if the government shuts down. In a statement, Van Orden said many military men and women are already struggling to make ends meet and taking away their paychecks as they put their lives on the line to defend America is unacceptable. A lacrosse tradition, the Festmaster position began in 1962. Jeff and Amy Robel were announced as this year's Festmaster and Frau last night at last night's Festmaster Ball. Jeff and Amy were both raised in lacrosse and they spent a lot of their childhood attending parades within the Cooley region. Robel says they're looking forward to reconnections with previous Fest Masters along with friends and family members. During the entrance, seeing all the people that, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of family that you don't get to see as often as you would like, but this is gonna be kind of cool for a few days everybody's going to be around. We can see all the people that it might take two years to see and we're going to get a chance to see them all in just a matter of a few days. Oktoberfest will kick off on September 28th running through September 30. General admission passes with costs will cost $20 which includes access to the grounds throughout the three-day event. To purchase tickets you can visit OktoberfestUSA.com. Lacrosse's north side is bound to be bright tonight. The Torchlight Parade will officially kick off Oktoberfest that starts at 7. Along with the floats and marching bands, the new Oktoberfest royal family will make their public parade debut. Make sure to bring your glow sticks to help illuminate the route. The parade starts on Gillette Street before going down south on Caledonia Street. 
And the weather is looking fantastic for that torchlight parade tonight. 7 p.m. We'll see temperatures around 67, slowly dropping to about 63 uh, by 9 o'clock. Today, though, mostly cloudy this morning, partial sunshine this afternoon. Temperatures topping out around 72 degrees in the La Crosse area. Warmer tomorrow for the tapping of the Golden Keg, 78. Small chance for shower late Friday night into Saturday morning, especially north and west. Otherwise, a warm weekend with highs in the lower to middle 80s. Well, thank you for watching News 8 Now this morning. Don't forget to keep up with News of the Day on News8000.com. And we'll have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 Now at noon. Have a wonderful Thursday and happy festing.